Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling Review Series for October the 17th, 1981. Super excited about the series, it's relatively new. Uh, basically, Jake Roberts comes out and talks about how uh, various other tag teams, including uh, he and Leroy Brown, as well as he and Jay Youngblood want can challengers. Also, Youngblood wants a shot at Piper. Piper comes out, cuts an amazing promo, gets in Youngblood's face, basically says he's already had problems with one Native American in Wahoo McDaniels, has no problem having a, uh, an issue with Youngblood himself, calls him a squaw, and uh, he basically Youngblood says he wants to get at Piper and get at him now. Uh, then we see a music video of Jimmy Valiant, mainly Memphis footage, CWA footage, uh, music video, probably the boy from New York City, although it's been dubbed over on the network, obviously. Uh, and um, obviously Jimmy Valiant is a guy who uh, was a big deal in the 70s in the WWF, but uh, managing to be, I wouldn't say less of a big deal here, just a different kind of big deal here in 1981. Uh, didn't realize that he had the history here, but uh, again, this is my first foray through Mid-Atlantic. Uh, I wish there was Mid-Atlantic back to the 70s, but anyway... Uh, music video is pretty long, and uh, him strutting and scribing around, pretty big deal there. Uh, we go to him actually being in the first match. Jimmy Valiant, obviously the heel. Jim Nelson, a.k.a. the man that becomes uh, um, Boris Zukov eventually is here. Uh, lots of punch kick and uh, jump around by Jimmy Valiant. Valiant um, trying to get as much of a, a run as he possibly can. I kind of say that Valiant's kind of a heel at the time, although he his alignment isn't figured out for the first few weeks. Uh, headlocks and punches, kicks, um, the easy takedown. I'd say he's more heel because um, um, Nelson's kind of treated like a, a non-sequential babyface at the time, so it would make more sense for him to be a heel. Uh, then we kind of go into uh, Valiant getting a quick victory. Uh, you know, top wrist locks, nothing really to write home about. Valiant does get the quick victory with the elbow drop, and there you go. Uh, we move into the second match of the day, which is Roddy Piper with kilt and uh, plaid trunks against Jay Youngblood. Youngblood a big deal at the time. Piper getting some ride time from the beginning. Worth going out of your way to watch this match, partially because I think Jay Youngblood, because he passed away before this uh, major national push um, for companies, I think... To me, he's he's undervalued. Um, they both get some ride time, standing switches. They go to the outside. Piper obviously tries to break the match down into a brawl, as one would expect. Also tries to take his man off his feet. And, uh, you know, you see the Gruffle Roman knuckle lock. Takedowns by um, Piper after some, you know, kind of inside cradle stuff, um, followed by hammer locks and the like. Um, Youngblood manages to work over the knee. Piper says the referee is allowing Youngblood to cheat. There's no proof of this, but Piper is fantastic at getting under the skin of the official, and there you go. Um, you know, shoulder tackles by Piper. Piper still at the time kind of treated almost like a managerial type guy in the area. I would love to know the history of uh, Mid-Atlantic from a um, just how long Piper had been there, that sort of thing. Piper it goes for a body slam, switches into a backbreaker, then goes for kind of the, that uh, front chancery, front face lock kind of stuff. And again, uh, bear hugs by Piper. Um, Youngblood is, is regarded pretty well, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Piper and getting some brawling. I love the fact that this is a much more wrestling-based program. It's been a while since we've seen one of those, since the, you know I've been doing a lot of superstars and, and um, um, even, even um, the... the uh, all-star wrestling from the early 80s WWF, but this is a much more in-ring based program. Um, needless to say, Youngblood makes a comeback a little bit here, and the eventual um, roll-up into the inside cradle uh, near fall by Youngblood. Youngblood also manages to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with his adversary, and you see um, basically Youngblood trying to get as much of a go there. There is a quick, um, very quick toward the end, kind of a double crash together there. Piper and um, 
young blood managing a double down. Not exactly a good space for them to be. Piper does manage to crawl over. Even Piper's crawling and the pacing of such is the, is uh, pretty pretty well there. And the official result is a time limit draw. Referee calling for that time limit draw. Uh, some basic uh, in, inset there. Uh, the team of Weaver and Paul Jones will be challenging for the tag team championships um, at a, an upcoming house event. And then we go to uh, the next in the series of matches, which is Kabuki. Uh, at least that's what he's called here, although it's not where he lands in the long run, but um, Kabuki versus Charlie Fulton. Fulton, a guy that is seen as a pretty big deal at the time uh, in terms of just enhancement talent. Guys, Kabuki ends up being known as the ninja. Uh, I assume that's the great Muda, although I'm not 100% sure because my history from 40 years ago is there. I thought Muda's first run was in uh, Florida, but I could be wrong. Uh, anyway, doing a lot of the slower oriental type stuff, uh, Kabuki with the faint pa face painted up and uh, lots of martial arts stuff, kind of riding some some side headlocks, basic maneuvers, getting things going back in the way, and the martial arts shots along the way, getting the victory. Um, then we go to a Wahoo McDaniel promo, McDaniel basically saying he's annoyed, frustrated that he hasn't been given matches with guys like Piper and other various individuals that he wants to face, uh, wants more competition. Jake Roberts says he also wants competition of a tag team variety, wants to get his hands on Piper, Ole Anderson, and the like. And then we go to a tag team match, this tag team match per se, uh, Big Ron Harris and uh, uh, Ali, let's see, uh, Ali Bay, uh, or Ricky Harris, not Ron Harris, Ricky Harris, um, and Ali Bay uh, facing off against Jake Roberts and bad Leroy Brown. Leroy Brown new to the area, at least, or coming back to the area for the end of 81. Uh, Jake Roberts been here a little bit and certainly getting some some go behind there. Ricky Harris would eventually become Black Bart and taking, and Jake Roberts getting some ride time on uh, Ali Bay. And uh, then Leroy Brown, you know, kind of doing the country gimmick, the the basic um, brawler with that sort of thing. Bay takes the majority of the match. Hard chops and punches and kicks by uh, Brown. Brown not exactly getting, you know, match of the year awards as far as someone like a nerd like Dave Meltzer would be concerned. But at the same time, um, getting a crowd reaction here in the studio. Uh, Bay comes in and gets an advantage there. Uh, lots of punches and kicks and uh, takeovers and the like. Jake Roberts doing a good bit of selling. Roberts thinner in 81 than most people are used to seeing him. Eventually we see uh, um, Leroy Brown kind of making a hot tag and a comeback. Body slam and a big splash and all of that. Uh, hype for Blackjack. Uh, Mulligan Jr., a.k.a. Barry Windham, against Kevin Sullivan, uh, upcoming at a house show in Roanoke on uh, Wednesday night. The um, Kevin Sullivan looking very lean at the time. Also, the uh, tag team champions, uh, man, the, the Markoffs, uh, with Lord Alfred Hayes as their manager will be defending their tag team gold. Also, the last match of the day, Frank Monty and Sergeant Slaughter. Slaughter is your new U.S. champion within the last couple of weeks here. Uh, Slaughter with short knees into the midsection. Slaughter obviously a heel. U.S. champion, probably the second um, most important championship of the area at the time behind the Mid-Atlantic Championship because, of course, the, the NWA World Championship, but that's for every NWA territory. Um, doesn't get a pinfall on Monty with the backbreaker. Slaughter much more of a brawler, especially as a heel. Uh, clotheslines and hits the uh, hard clothesline, and then, obviously, the Cobra Clutch. 
Squatters says there is no competition. People have been trying to ask him to be a Marine. Uh, and then we kind of get the promise for an upcoming series of house shows where the Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion Ivan Koloff promises to get rid of Jimmy Valiant. So Jimmy Valiant in, is, in fact, a babyface. Also, Ole Anderson siding with Koloff, so that uh, tandem is there. And obviously Piper and Anderson are, are uh, tied to each other as well. We'll be back with more right after this.